Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. I'm Michelle. And I'm Ken, and today we're here to talk about Infinity Pool. Yeah. Uh, the latest horror film directed by Brandon Cronenberg, who is the son of legendary uh, horror filmmaker David Cronenberg. Yeah, I did not know that until you told me when we were watching it. Yeah, so I, I was really interested to, to watch this one because I really enjoyed um, his last movie, Possessor, and I don't think you watched that one with me. It came I out did not. In, in 2020 so i was curious uh, i heard a, a lot of different things about this so i was, oh, I was yes. definitely curious to check it out but look before we get into talking about it we're going to break this movie down and give our thoughts hit that subscribe button if you haven't uh, already we do movie reviews and just movie related content tv related content on this channel so you know yeah. if you enjoy that kind of thing check us out subscribe and also like the video like the video and then uh comment down below did you see this uh did you see this weird ass movie? Let us know what you think of it in the Wild comment section movie. below, and then let us know if you're going to watch it based on our um, our recommendation here today. So I, I yeah. imagine it's on streaming services to rent right now. We watched it on Blu-ray because I just bought it recently, but yeah, um, it should be available to rent for like four ninety nine or five ninety nine or something like that. But okay, let's let, let's talk about this movie. Just yeah. we'll go into just general thoughts, and then we'll kind of give a brief synopsis, and then go into some. Going to some stuff we liked about it, didn't like, whatever. Yeah, I, so when this movie came out, I definitely kept hearing that it was very weird and wild. And um, yeah, I, I knew that it was going to be different. Yeah. Um, and I definitely knew that I probably wasn't going to like it. Yeah. Um, it's just not my kind of movie. Uh, so... Um, but I, I, watching you, because I'm a very observant of you when I when we're watching movies. Mm -hmm. I don't feel like you hated it. I didn't. I didn't yeah. hate it. Um, it was. I think that I was thinking <laughs> that it was going to be a lot more. Um, I don't know the word. Like outside the box, a lot more. One of those. <sighs> You have to think about it really hard to figure yeah. out what's going on. I don't know the word that I'm looking for. More like more, more meta um, metaphoric. Uh, yeah, more more obscure, more. Um, uh, I, I don't know either. <laughs> yeah. Um. But yeah, it it definitely was more. It was easier to follow than I thought it was going to be, and so that was good. I mean, it um, is it is straightforward, like in the plots, but there are a lot of sequences of just like real like surrealism correct where you're not sure like if what you're watching is actually real or not right um there's a lot of that going on but the story plot itself is pretty easy to follow right i, I had just felt like from the previews that it was it was going to be a lot different which is good because you know a lot yeah. of times previews show you too much and you can kind of figure out a lot but i'll say this i don't i don't know if i actually watched a full preview i try to stay away from them but um, even with everybody talking about it, showing images of it, seeing right. some clips here and there, I I thought I knew what this movie was going to be, and it turned out to be something different. So it did kind of surprise me. So right. I yeah. was happy, you know, in that aspect. I, I'd say overall, um, I, I kind of dug it. Gotcha. You know, I, I didn't love it, but I thought it was uh, it was interesting. It kept me compelled the whole way through. Like I was now whether or not it delivers on that by the end is mm -hmm. up for interpretation but like i was interested in what was going on and what the the directions the story was going to take uh, yeah. throughout the movie so yeah i would agree with that i you know enjoyed it more than i thought i was going to and um you know i i still don't think i would ever watch this again yeah uh, I, I, I probably would i want to go back and rewatch it cuz his his other, I don't think it was his first movie, but it was his first like bigger movie that more people saw. But Possessor was kind of like this, where you weren't exactly sure like what was happening. It was all very kind of dreamlike and surreal. Gotcha. But you knew what was going on. The basic premise was there and the setup was easy to follow. Um, but I just like the tone and I like the vibe and I like the filmmaking style. I just think that he's he's good with the camera. Like I just like that he has very interesting shots that just kind of keep you engaged. Okay. Like, there's a scene in this where they're like talking back and forth and it's like close up on the lips and stuff. Mm -hmm. I don't know. It just kind of draws you in and kind of entrances you and just forces you to, to pay attention to what's going on. Gotcha. Um, so I, I mean, dug it, all that stuff. He, I guess you could say he definitely has his own style or he's trying to 
you know, claim I, his own style. I don't think I, he's like his dad. Uh, I think he, he is doing something different. Yeah, I, I didn't necessarily like the film style, you know, the the flipping of the camera <laughs> yeah. and just it kind Very of made Ari me... Aster because he does that in like Midsummer and stuff, I feel like. Yeah, it just, it at times it kind of made me feel a little woozy, like like yeah. you know dizzy and stuff but um so i can't imagine seeing it like on the big screen but yeah but look i'm getting into we'll get into like the basic setup for this movie so you got alexander skarsgård who's mm-hmm. a been writer. in a ton of stuff he's you know on tv and and in movies and stuff you said a writer no I'm oh saying yeah that's he's playing he a writer yeah. yeah uh but mia goss in this movie as well who's kind of blown up in the more indie horror scene i would mm-hmm. say she's not like mainstream like jenna ortega is but yeah she's kind of starting to blow up with x and pearl and everything like that right um so i mean the setup is you had this husband and wife mm-hmm. uh, james and m foster and they're enjoying an all-inclusive beach vacation um in the fictional island of la toca so this is not based fictional. on an actual oh, okay. uh place okay um and then they kind of meet some odd people Mm -hmm. that are also there vacationing Mm -hmm. and they get into some stuff and some things happen and that's all i'm willing to really talk about because i don't want to spoil any like key plot points to basically try to uh give him some inspiration for his next book he's had a bit of writer's block and his wife thought that this could help to kind of get away and yeah and his wife's played by uh cleopatra coleman Mm -hmm. um so it's not mia goth like i just wanted to make that clear she's kind of on the more opposing end of of what's Mm -hmm. going on with them yeah i Um, from the preview i kind of thought that she was his wife i did too i thought that they were together and something was happening with both of them in the movie not yeah um, um, so, you know, to, just to go off of that, I will say, you know, this is a very, like, I don't like these types of movies that make you just feel weird and <laughs> icky. They make you feel uncomfortable watching it. Yeah. I don't like those kind of movies. And yeah. I know you do. You, I do. You love yeah. to squirm and. <laughs> I mean, and this is. Or maybe uh, you don't squirm. I don't know. But. It has this just like heavy, to me, those Tone. the movies that are so heavy where you can, and you can say that that's, a, you know, that they're doing their job, that they're making a good movie by making you feel that heaviness, but it's not something that I'm like um, drawn to. I don't like to feel that way. Yeah. <laughs> and so. Um, the score really adds a lot to it too. Mm-hmm. It's like this real like ambient, just like heavy, Doom. loud um yeah not like bombastic or anything but it's just like noises <laughs> that are like in your yeah. face it's just very um, heavy very dooms like feeling yeah you're, you're just, just on edge the whole time because you're just like feeling it. you're not really sure like what's going to happen and then like when it finally starts to reveal itself mm-hmm. it's not like this super like awful like evil thing that's going on behind the scenes right it kind of gets to the point where it's a joke almost a little comedic Mm -hmm. like what's what's going on and what's happening right um and there's no like real like big and there is a climax to the movie but there's no like huge thing that happened yeah that's kind of what i meant earlier when i said that it was a lot more direct than i thought it was going to be yeah it's like by the end of it you're just kind of like okay this doesn't really have this like there's not this secret message or like uh something greater going on here like it's it's pretty direct and of course there's always things that you can uh leave up for interpretation you you could say some different theories you know by the end of it um but i'm not sure you know one thing one thing i did really like about it is i i I thought this from the trailers i thought this is going to be like more of like a straightforward horror movie Mm -hmm. this is very sci-fi i would say just in some of the things that happen with it which makes sense because possessor is very sci-fi horror okay uh, so I would say that this is definitely sci-fi horror as well. So, um, you know, I don't know. I think Brandon Cronenberg is is super talented as a filmmaker. He's somebody that's kind of two for two for me at this point. So gotcha. I'm interested in anything 
uh, that he does next. So what, like, what did you think about the performances? I thought everybody was great. I thought Alexander Skarsgård. I mean, he's he's great in you know pretty much everything we've seen him in. I don't think he's ever phoned in a performance. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know you're a little conflicted on on Mia Goth, mm-hmm. but I thought she was she was good. Like she's she's good at playing like unhinged and crazy. <laughs> Like, yeah. And she makes you believe it. Like, you believe that she's nutty, like, with her with her performance. She did it in Pearl, and, and she did it here. So, yeah, I think it was I a good performance. I, I personally, like, I feel like everybody was fine, but, or maybe a little bit more than fine. I just, you know, I was telling you when we were watching it, I didn't feel, you know, connected to anyone. I didn't really care what happened to anyone. Yeah. Um, and I don't always love those kind of movies because I feel like you kind of do need someone that you're rooting for or that you empathize with or, you know what I mean? I usually agree with that. Mm-hmm. But as long as the story's compelling enough to keep me engaged, I can be connected by the story mm-hmm. that's being presented to me. And I don't always have to be connected or rooting for like any specific characters. Sometimes that'll help take the movie to the next level Mm -hmm. uh which is maybe why i don't like love this movie i just kind of like it right um but yeah i get what you're saying because there's movies like that like midsummer is Mm -hmm. is a big example i don't care about anybody in that movie right i think they're all awful and i just don't enjoy watching (laughs) them at all this movie like i was i didn't like anybody but nobody's supposed to be likable um but i was still interested in them Mm -hmm. and and what was going on and what was going to happen next so yeah um and you know as far as mia goth goes i i feel like she's kind of if she keeps with it she's going to a little typecast yeah definitely and it's it's gonna just kind of wear me down a little bit i'm gonna be like okay that's enough of the like seductive psycho. <laughs> yeah, we, we need know? a weird, unhinged um, performance. Like, crazy is she woman, able? Girl. Is she able to get me a goth? Normal. Yeah, uh, she's normal. been a lot of. She's been acting for for a, for a while. Like, she's only just now like mm-hmm. kind of break. She's been doing a lot of. She did that movie, A Cure for Wellness. I remember we watched that together, which is super we weird. We didn't like it. I, I did not like that movie. Um, and she's done some other like indie stuff that uh, off the top of my head I can't think of. But, yeah. Um, yeah, she's been doing this kind of stuff for a while. She's kind of she was in Suspiria too, the remake. Um, so yeah, she's in a lot of these these but type again, of weird <laughs> type of movies. Um, yeah, she enjoys the weirdness. Um, yeah, that's yeah, fine. She found that's her fine. thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, do you have anything else you want to say? No, uh, I guess we can get into uh, just our overall score and, and yeah. stuff on it, and then yeah, I mean. In the video. I I feel like I'm kind of I am talking more negatively about it, but at you know it was still a decent watch, and for me a decent watch means a three point five. Yeah, I I you know what it feels like I liked it a lot more than you. Yeah, no, you did. I'm gonna give it a four. Okay. Because I appreciate a lot about it, and the thing that the plot is actually really cool, and I wish they would have explored it a little bit more, mm-hmm. and maybe not necessarily explained everything, but. I, 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 I did want more. Like, mm-hmm. I wanted to know what the hell was going on. Mm-hmm. And they never really give you that. But yeah. I, I'll give it a four out of a five. It, it's good. I like it. All right. It. There you go. Yep. Yeah, that's our review. Hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Like this video. And then, you know, leave us a comment down below on Infinity Pool. What'd you think of it if you watched it? If you're, are you going to watch it? Uh, let us know. And then turn on the bell notifications. And uh, we'll see you guys later. Bye, guys.